Hello and welcome to the seventh tutorial based on the topics presented at IB Experts Firebird School, held by Holger Klemt and Jason Chapman as part of the International Firebird Conference 2007. In the first part of this topic, database design and modeling, we'd like to look in a little more depth at data modeling and using primary and foreign keys. The second part will introduce you to database design using IB Experts Database Designer, demonstrate the effects of dependencies and show you how to visualize the whole thing quickly and simply. We will also look more closely at using views. So, we'll start with developing a data model. A data model includes everything that is going to sit inside the database. We mentioned in the last session that it is important to develop a data model before creating your database and database objects. When starting a data model, the key thing is to always start at the highest level. Make sure you have got your entities correct. Construct your main tables and relationships. In this system that we've got here, they've identified that you have products, categories, customers, orders and so on. Then you can go through and put in your primary keys and put lines between your entities to define relationships between them and so on. So before you've really got down to the attributes of those things, you actually know which tables are there. And visualizing it from that level to begin with is better than starting off with everything you know about a product and everything you know about a category, because you get too bogged down in the detail. Attributes can be added later. Scope it first. How big is it going to be? And how's it all going to fit together? The number of tables in a database is not limited. Many commercial databases commonly use 2,000 to 3,000 tables. If you have information, don't try to generalize it too much. You can decide in your data model which fields you are going to use and how for which items. Alternatively, you can include additional attributes in additional separate tables. Using views, this is not even apparent to the user, as views fetch fields from any number of tables. For example, shoe information is fetched from the shoe product table, clothing details from the clothing product table, and so on. You will find out more about views in part two of this topic. Let's take a look at the product and category tables. Product has a foreign key on the category ID. There's another foreign key, common product ID. This foreign key points by its definition to itself. Firebird lets you define such recursive data, and you can map tree structures. In fact, there are an immense number of possibilities. Within your application, you have relationships which are one-to-one. -one. Many people say that if you have a one-to-one -one relationship between two tables, then it should be put together and become one table. However, this is not always the case, particularly when developing one application for different clients with different requirements. There are often good reasons for maintaining a core customer table that is distributed to all customers, and then a customer X table that includes information for a specific client. It prevents tables becoming too wide and confusing. Another reason for one-to-one -one tables may be that in case of wide tables with huge amounts of data, searching for specific information just takes too long. For example, most journalists search in a press agency database using keywords for anything relevant to a particular subject, for example concerning 9-11, or for all recent articles, for example everything new in the last two days. They initially wish to see a full list of relevant articles, including the title, creation date and short description. At this stage, they do not need to view the whole article and accompanying photos for each article, which meet their search conditions. This information can be returned later, after they have selected the article that particularly interests them. To improve performance, the table is split into four separate tables, each with a one-to-one -one relationship. The initial key information table, now containing the information most intensively searched for, being only 2% of the size of the original single table. The second table is used to store all other information. The third table stores the RTF articles themselves, and the fourth table the full text search contents. And then you have n to one any number to one relationships. The example here is, every product has one category, n can be zero or more. It's called multiplicity. N to one relationships can be defined in accordance with your business logic and rules. The multiplicity is defined by yourself. You may need to define an N to one relationship where N is larger than zero but less than 10. Maybe N can be null, 
When it is not null, you are enforcing a relationship. The demo database, DB1, demonstrates a simple end-to-one relationship whereby all products have one category, but one category can have many products or no products assigned to it. It also talks here about end-to-end, many-to-many relationships. A classic example can be seen here in DB1. One customer can purchase several products and a single product can be purchased by many customers. To make this happen, you need to have some linking table in the middle. The DB1 example shows the link from customer to orders. Orders is linked to order line and order line to product. All these relationships are built up using primary and foreign keys, thus forming an end-to-end -end relationship between customers and products. It is also possible to specify what should happen to these related datasets should one of them be updated or deleted. For example, if you delete a customer in the customer table that has no orders and therefore no order lines or products related to him, there is no problem. If, however, you attempt to delete a customer that has already placed orders, an error message will appear due to a violation of the foreign key constraint FK orders ID on the table order line. This is necessary to maintain the database's integrity. Update and delete rules can be defined on the constraints page in IB Experts Table Editor. To ascertain which relationships a table has with other database objects and which dependencies other database objects have on a certain table, view the Object Editor's Dependencies page, which we will take a look at later. A tip here, a fiber database does not necessarily become slower the larger it gets. This is because the Firebird server only loads data pages when they are actually being worked on. So if I work mainly on the customer table, it doesn't matter that I have over 2 million order lines sitting on the server, because these are only loaded when I perform some operation, such as select or update, directly on them. Using primary and foreign keys. Let's take a look at the DB1 database, at which primary and foreign keys there are. On the category table, we can see keys on the ID and on customer, order line, order, etc. Then, in the next step, we have foreign keys. The database needs foreign keys to maintain integrity. Firebird puts indices hidden on the back, so when you reach for your primary key, it does a few things in the background, one of which is creating an index. We very briefly mentioned it in the last session. There are two purposes of an index. A normal index allows you to locate a piece of data quickly without having to scan through the whole structure. You don't have to scan the whole table and you can get to it much more quickly. And the thing about a unique index is because it orders by that index value, it knows if there's another value that is the same. So, you have a primary key and you put the data into the database. For example, you start off with 50, 49, 100, 12, 11, etc. By putting a unique index on it, it has its little lookup somewhere that has that primary key in the ascending order. And when someone else goes to put in 50, and 50 already exists, it doesn't have to go through the whole table. It knows. It goes straight into the index to the right place. So there is a link between indexes and foreign keys and primary keys. But of course you can add your own indexes. You are not obliged to use the systems. On the order line table, we have a foreign key by definition linking to our table product. It references the product table via the product ID. In the order line table, I have a relationship to the orders table, and in the orders table, a defined relationship to the customer table. That means these definitions, what belongs to what, I define myself using foreign keys. This way, I can ensure if I wish to delete a customer, an exception will appear. Because I've defined the foreign key action as delete on cascade. So when I delete a customer, Firebird attempts to delete all orders related to this customer. Firebird can't cascade onto the order lines which triggers the error message. This ensures data consistency. When I enter the SQL command, insert into customer without orders, the resulting datasets are customers without orders. For example, the customer with the ID 5. If we try to delete this in the customer table, I only need to confirm delete all selected records and the dataset is deleted. I don't need to program any testing mechanism. Firebird does it for me. And the superb thing about Firebird's transaction mechanism is I can combine any number of delete commands. They only really take effect after I have committed. If I notice I've made a mistake, I can roll back at any time up until the final commit command. 
We'll see in the administration training that when I delete something, Firebird actually creates a new dataset. This then has a delete flag and it's deleted at a later stage automatically by the Firebird database after the transaction is completed. The database statistics shows you clearly how much there is to tidy up and or whether the database has already done it. This so-called garbage collection runs constantly in the background, which means that Firebird databases can be run 24-7 without having to shut them down for any reason, not even for a backup. Firebird runs a so-called hot backup. The backup tool logs itself into the system as a user and reads all the data. Other users can work at the same time. The backup is still consistent. We'll continue with a brief introduction to dependencies, visualizing the data model, comparing data models and understanding and using views in part two of our tutorial series, Database Design and Modeling. Goodbye for now and thank you from all of us at IBExpert.